everybody, this is Jen from Scrap and Posh, and I am here with my Country Craft Creation Design Team project. Um, this is going to be super simple because it's eight pages. They're all going to be the same. And I, you will have already seen how this is going to turn out, but how I have not. So, in my head, it's really super cute. So, we'll see how it goes. I have the Color Play Wizard World collection, and it is a Harry Potter inspired collection. And as everybody knows, I am a Harry Potter fan. So, needless to say, I had to have it. And when Tamara had it in her shop, I seen it in her shop, I was like, oh, I can't wait, I can't wait, I need that. Um, and she says, well, we have some. So, um, I got two packs from Tamara uh, at Country Craft Creations, and I'll put the link below. And then I found that I had already purchased a pack. So, um, we're going, actually I have two packs, but I'm going to try and keep it down to three and if you don't want to buy three packs you surely don't have to because you can use regular color cardstock and then just use the these for accents because in each pack there is six 12 by 12 sheets and this is on the back of the cover sheet so that's like a bonus let me find it here there's the cover sheet and they have this on the back. So that's kind of like a bonus sheet. Hear my phone ringed home. <laughs> yes, I am a Harry Potter freak. <laughs> um, so, uh, so six 12 by 12s, one back of a 12 by 12. And then, um, I want to say six, six by 12s. And they're super cute. Okay, there's one side. And there's the other. Okay, so that's one pack. So I have three of those. Like I said, you don't need three, but um, we'll see what I can do. I'm gonna see what I can do with two. When I run out, I'm going to have to open the third one and let you guys know. Um, I'll let you guys know at the end what I, uh, what I end up with. I'm also starting with 25 pieces of 12 by 12 black cardstock. So I'll let you know how many of those I end up using. With mistakes, of course, because I don't want to make mistakes. I have two 10 by 12s. And one 2 by 12 piece of chipboard for the covers and spine. And then I have all this awesome seam binding that I'm going to incorporate also. So let's get started, shall we? First thing I gotta do is make the binding. So we need about. This is going to be, we're going to need about 16 by 12 will work. So I'm going to take one full sheet of cardstock and then cut the other one down to about six inches. That should give me about a one inch overlay here or two inches and what I like to do in my cardstock when I am combining them when I have to make one piece two pieces be one Make 
sure I got a good measurement here before I get too overboard. Oh yeah, we'll just line it up on the 13 inch. So um, I'm overlapping it at two inches on the 12 inch one. And if you take your short piece and put score tape on one side, and you take score tape on the other side, this is the easiest way I found to do it. And then we're going to go two inches, right? That's where this one's going to line up on this side. So I just take a piece to go across that, two inches long. And that'll seal the top and the bottom. And then for the spot in the middle here, the score tape's going to make it stick. I just need something that's going to make it stay in place for, um, it's hard to explain, like, um, when you do your cover, if you have spots under your cover that are far enough apart without adhesive, it'll bubble up, and this will do the same thing, so just make sure you have a pretty decent cover done it. The best thing to do is get some really big score tape and just use one big foosh score tape, but... I don't have really big score tape, so we're going to do it this way. Now I use my mat and line it up on the 13 inches. And line it up at the top and the bottom. Pretty sure that just stuck, so it's not gonna matter much here. All right, so I got a seam, it's not in the middle. I don't want my seam in the middle, it's right here. And then I'm going to do another test run here. Oh, yeah, plenty of room. Okay. So now I'm going to take my half inch score tape. I don't think this is going to get it. I'm going to have to get some more. Let's see. Go around the outside of this, of all the perimeters of the chipboard. So I think this is going to be a really cute project for a Harry Potter fan. If you're not a Harry Potter fan, but you do like to read, it's going to be a cute project too. And you can kind of personalize it for whatever um, books you like. Like, I was thinking, um, you know, if you like romance novels, you can do, you know, flowery and frilly. If you like mysteries like the perfect paper would be um, the Sherlock collection oh what's it called from graphic 45 it's not called Sherlock but that's what it is oh is it is it elementary no master detective ha it's master detective right and uh, if you make one of these for your young child and help them print the pictures, the books out, I think that would encourage them to read. Like every time you read a book, you get to fill one of these out. So it's fun. So you should read more. And you can always do stickers like stars and stuff. Uh, if they're in like the Book It program at school, you can incorporate that. Lots of fun things you could do. And then, 
Sometimes I use spray adhesive. You can also use glue. I'm just going to use my ATG. And um, that's enough coverage to keep the cover secure and not like flopping up. So do you guys think this should have a closure? Not sure. Not sure if I want a closure. I mean, it's really not going to get all that bulky. I'll straighten my paper out so I'm not putting it on there crooked. Give myself about an inch top and bottom. Maybe I'll put a loop in it for a charm and then oops if uh, somebody wants to add one they can And then leave yourself about a quarter inch between the cover and the spine. And I forgot to put my score tape down. If I had put the score tape in there, it would be a quarter inch. It's going to be close, so we'll just stick it in there. Not quite a quarter inch there. Do you guys want to see the puppy? What are you doing, Nova? It's her first time in my scrapbook room. She's just come wandering back. She's usually sleeping. She's been a handful, but that's what puppies are. So, story about the puppy, Nova, here. She is, um, she is a Great Pyrenees, and I have two other Great Pyrenees. One is five, and one is two, three. And... She is my daughter's dog. That was her Christmas present this year. And if you follow my personal page on Instagram, it's StuartJ79 with a U. She, uh, I post her on there quite a bit. Nova. If you eat any of my scrapbooking supplies, desk to fold it over. That's the best way that I have found to get a straight line. A 
Um, we have a two inch spine and we're going to use quarter inch gusset. So, um, the, um, hinge is going to be the same as it always is. to do the long sides first. Take my bone folder and just go over that crease there. All right, there's that six by ten book. Let's start on the hinge. You want to cut the end, the hinge at nine and three quarter. Actually, let's do nine and a half. That'll give us a half inch or a quarter inch top and bottom. And I just leave the length at 12 because it, it's bigger on one side than it is on the other, but it doesn't really hurt anything. I'm going to get my scoreboard out. Okay. Let's make the hinge. I got this paper cut at nine and a half by 12 and we're gonna score at one and it goes half half quarter one and a half two two and a quarter two and three quarter three and a quarter three and a half four Four and a half, four and three quarter, five and a quarter, five and three quarter, six, six and a half, seven, seven and a quarter, seven and three quarters, eight and a quarter. Eight and a half, nine, nine and a half, nine and three quarter, ten and a quarter, ten and three quarter. All right, there's our hitch. Okay, now. We're going to put quarter inch score tape on every other half inch mark. So I just pick one, like the first one, on each group. Right 
So you should have eight by the time you're done. I just fold over each one of them. You just fold it over after the score tape and then fold it back right before the, the score tape. Turn it over. And you just want to kind of work your hinges both ways so that once you get it in there you don't have to pull and push on it too much. Okay, and then I'll take my Tim Holtz scissors here and I'm going to cut at a 45 degree and that just makes it so that when um see what I'm doing when I make the pages at nine and a half inches that the pages will slide down over the hinges. I guess it's whatever you want to call them. And then I gotta go get some half inch score tape because it's easier than trying to use the quarter inch score tape for the back of this hinge. You take your half inch score tape or whatever size you have, like three inch would probably be like perfect for this. And you just tape the entire hinge because this is what's going to hold your pages in.
Okay. And then I'm going to put a piece of quarter inch across the top and bottom just to make sure. Okay, and then all we have to do is line our hinge up with our book. Get everything straight, that helps. And then remember you have about a quarter inch top and bottom. And you just place the paper parallel. To the bottom and the top and then before I stick it down really good I'm going to hold it up because I just want to make sure that it's somewhat straight it's really stuck to my fingers okay Crooked. Okay, plan B, stand up and do it. I may jostle the camera a little bit. Okay. About a quarter inch off the bottom here and it's straight at the bottom. Good. Now we can go on to our pages. Ok, 
Okay, so I promise super easy. You have eight pieces at um, five inches by nine and a half, eight pieces at five inches by ten and a half, and 16 pieces at nine and a half by five and a half, or yeah, nine and a half by five and a half. And um, I've used almost my entire paper pack just on this, so 25 sheets of cardstock gone already. Um, these we are not going to fold. The ten and a half is going to be part of your base page. And these are going to get a half inch score on both sides. And then I'm not going to do all of them online or on on the camera here. Okay. And then the score tape for the base page goes along the pockets here or along these folds. score tape on that. You don't have to do that. I just didn't do very good with my score tape. And then this one here. And this is your ten and a half inch piece by five. And then you just take your nine and a half by five and line them up and if your paper is just a little bit longer your flat paper is just a little bit longer just split the difference it's not going to make that big of a, a, a difference um, what happens is is that your paper um, when you fold your paper it, it sometimes it changes the size of it so like you can see, I have that eighth inch. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's like a probably like a sixteenth inch there. If it bothers you, you can cut it off. Um, it doesn't really bother me that much, but that's all it takes. Okay, so that's that's the base base page, and then the only thing we're adding on as far as. Um, other page parts remember this is going to be eight of the same page are two flaps and they're five and a half by nine and a half and we're just going to score on one side so this is like one page here This is just going to go on either side here. So you can like start to see why we need so much paper. And you don't have to cover it all with pattern paper. You can color it with set, uh, solid papers. Um, you can cover it with just different colors. Your card stock you can find matching, which I may end up doing. And you just, oh, let me explain. Like this is one side, it opens, you're going to put this one on this, the, flip it over and put it on the same side. I did not mean to do that. Jeez. Ah, 
score tape, so good stuff. It is not forgiving though. All right. So every page is going to give you one, two, three, four, five, six full five by nine and a half pages. And then you'll also have room for a, a tag of sorts. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do. So we'll just go ahead and stick it in the book as we go. Keep things interesting here. So, um, you're going to end up with 32 pages. All right. So now I take these off and you want your hinge to go on the side of the flap. So that it just continually opens like a page in a book. I just like this because, uh, I mean, just a lot of people read, I think, more now than when I was a kid for sure. And uh, you can just personalize it however you want. It doesn't have to be... You can even make it like smaller, like if I was a ch child. See, it'll be like this. There's one page, there's the pocket page in the middle, and there's that. Um, now obviously we're going to cover it up. We're going to figure out what we're going to do exactly with this hinge. Uh, but right now I'm just going to put all the, the different pages in. Well, they're all the same, so I'm going to put all the pages in. And then we'll come back and start decorating. Okay, so here's our book. And let's decorate. Um, I like the candle paper for the front cover. And it's like the perfect size. Double check a measurement. Uh, it is 10, so let's cut it at 9 and 7 eighths and see how it goes. I'm going to I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut off these candles here so that it, you can see how it um, Gets less and less And I think I'm just going to trim an eighth inch off one side for us. Looks good. And this is really thick paper, so I wouldn't be shy to use uh, liquid glue on it. And when I put all my pages in, I also used uh, liquid glue on the to to put the hinges together there so okay make sure you have it go in the right direction which i have my seam in the back so i want to make sure it stays in the back not on the front and then let's line this up enough room here okay um, I'm going to continue on with the cover I'm going to do the back side in this blue
don't like using white on my covers too often because I think they'll get dirty. I think my camera's crooked. There we go. Make sure I got the right way. Yep. So my moons are facing. Is that the right way? Yeah, that's the right way. I'm not sure. Oh, that's crooked. But it's staying. It's a little crooked. No, it's not crooked. It's just off center a little bit. And then on the spine, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Let's see. So I'm going to leave that. But for the front cover, I want to add him. It was a toss up between the owl and the platform and the three quarter sign. So I thought that would be neat too. Just because it's so epic, it's like entering into the wizard world. But I like the owl with all the books on it. Which is obviously the point. So I've got to find something. I'm going to um, off-center it. I'm going to make it kind of diagonal. Uh, I didn't cut it straight, so well, I, cu I, I cut a little bit off there. Just go around the outside in black. And then I almost want to put like a gold on there. I have Maybe even put like a door here. Decisions, decisions. Let's look on the inside anyways. Okay, so let's talk about the inside. Um, I put all my pages in and you can put whatever you want on the pages. Like you can put pockets, you can put, so this is very versatile. It could be like anything you want. Um, I messed up on this one, but it's going to be covered up anyway. So, um, so yeah, you can make it anything you want, but I'm going to make it, like I said, a reading log. So I want it to be, um, I want it to be simple and I want it to be uniform because like I want it to be this is what this is for and fill it out this way if that makes sense. I'm going to take I'm going to take this paper because it's very versatile and I am going to put it on the covers front and back. So again I'm cutting that at 9 and 7 eighths by 5 and 7 eighths. Just like perfect timing for the new year too. So your 2019 reading log. Okay. 
And I think it's really neat that they put a pattern that you can actually use on the back of the packaging. <laughs> Granted, I would have uh, cut out these patterns anyways, and I may still on the other sheet because I can use those as bookmarks, which is perfect for this. And um, that's another idea we can use is putting uh, a pocket on one of the pages for bookmarks. Now remember, if you do put pockets on, which I may put one on, like I said, for bookmarks, you want to put it um, I mean, where the head, where the gusset or the uh, gutter is, not where the two pages are folded together because there's no room there. You still have extra room um, even after you put your folds on. You'll have an extra room on these pages here. Okay, so let's look here. Um, I know I'm not going to have enough paper to cover all of this. So I had an idea and that is for the base pages because we're going to put flaps on them to use the house colors red, yellow, green, and blue and just match it as closely as possible to um, the colors that they use here. So like I would get my sample sheet, which would be my other color cover sheet, if I can find it, Hufflepuff, Slytherin, and I haven't opened my, uh, my third package, you guys, just to know that, this is all the, the first two packages. Um, where is it at? Okay, I'm going to use this blue and green to match my blue and green. And then, oh, um, this yellow and red. So I'm going to go find some plain cardstock to match everything. Okay, so I have some cardstock that I picked out. Um, the closest I could come to the colors in the collection. They are house colors and I got uh, my yellow and blue are 12 by 12s and my green and red are 8.5 by 11s. Just stuff I pulled from my stash. So um, we're going to see if we can't get this done in just two collections. Um, so I tabled the front for now because I'm not exactly sure what I want. I mean I know I want this but I want something else also, uh, and I'm not sure what that is yet. And then I want to do something to the spine, and I'm not sure what that is yet. And maybe the two will um, go hand in hand. So I'm going to think about that. And in the meantime, uh, I'm going to start with the pages. So double check my measurements here. I have five by nine and a half, right? Five by nine and a half inch pages. So let's leave. Oh, let's go. Let's try four and seven eighths by nine and three eighths. And I'm a Slytherin, but most people like Gryffindor, so we'll start with the red. So I have an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. We're only going to be able to get one full page per sheet. Let's see what four and seven eighths by nine and three eighths looks like. I think this color goes quite well. This color was from the Heritage Collection from, I want to say, Doris. Um, they're just cardstock that come in a, uh, 
a collection pack. Actually, hang on. Let's look. Oh, huh, okay. Hang on. Let's see who it really is. Um, the Heritage Collection from... I'm not sure who makes this. <clears throat> oh, the paper company. Uh, I may have gotten this at Hobby Lobby, and I'm sure the reds from here, the greens from here, I'm sure if I could have found the blue, I think I already used it, the blue would have probably worked. Uh, so this is a pretty good option. Okay, so focusing back on what I want to make this, which is a reading log. like to do is take the three by four cut up parts and make little flaps with them. I made this uh, about a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth inch bigger or smaller than the page so you're only going to have a sixteenth inch all the way around. <coughs> okay. So my first page is Gryffindor. What I was thinking, and these leftovers are going to be a perfect size, but it probably wouldn't. Um, I think I think I like this as something to add to the cover here. So I'm going to put these two aside. I may put the green one in the back. But what I really want to do is add some 3x4 cut-aparts as flaps. And they don't all have to be 3x4 cut-aparts. I did that really badly because I wasn't standing up and seeing what I was cutting. Uh, I don't even know if I'll be able to, yeah, I can hide what I've, how I've cut this here. Okay, so what I would like to do, and you can do it one of two ways. You can either make your flap go vertical or uh, horizontal and grab a piece of scrap cardstock here and let's cut this is three so let's cut this at three and a quarter uh, actually, let's cut it at three and an eighth. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and put this on here. yourself about a sixteenth of an inch and fold it down and then we'll just cut this off. And that's going to go right there. And since I used black, I am going to cut a piece of coffee dyed paper. I 
at three by four. And I'm just going to tape that right to the back side here. Okay, and then you always have the option to add something here too if you want. Um, but what I'm going to do is print out some, um, for my book journal, I'm going to print out the 3x4, and then I'll write about it here. So, um, I'll do one and show it to you, or several, I guess, in the share video. So, okay, well, that's, that's the general idea of, like, the whole thing, so... I'm going to keep going and probably just speed you up through the decorating process until we get to something new. So, um, let's see what we can get done. <laughs> 